Good day, this is Charles McCall with uh, Leadership 101, Lesson 2 of Leadership 101. A quick review of, of Lesson 1, I attempted to persuade you that you are called to lead, at least at some level, because you're a child of Adam and Eve, you're a child of God, because you're a child of Adam and Eve, uh, that God's hand is upon you, and Adam and Eve were born to lead, so it's in your DNA to lead at some, at least at one level. And we'll talk later about the five levels of leadership. And so uh, that was my desire in lesson one to hopefully convince you that yes, I believe I have the potential to lead at least at some level. And again, if you're uh, sitting by yourself, I'd like for you to you just to declare that out loud and if you're with a group turn to the person on your left turn to the person on your right and say you are qualified to lead you have the potential to lead at least at some level and then after you say that then say back to them I have the potential to lead at least at one level take a moment now and just say that to one another or say it to yourself make a, a faith declaration declaring what God says about you <clears throat> However, uh, even though we may believe that, many of us have doubts in our mind. <laughs> we think, I can't lead, and we have all these different reasons. Sometimes it's difficult to believe that we have the potential to lead uh, in our heart. We hope that uh, we might be able to do something like that, but in our mind there's doubt and there's struggle. Then you know, I live in a country, I, I live and work in Cambodia, and we've been there for many years, and Cambodia has been devastated by a genocidal war. Uh, Cambodia has a, has a massive poverty problem, and so I face poverty every day. I face people who lack every day. There's uh, most of the children drop out of school in sixth grade, they lack in education, and just have low-level jobs, very hopeless situation. And so honestly, I've had to ask myself, do I believe what I just told you? Do I believe that, that these people that are just selling on the street and, and uh, making ends meet day to day and sometimes not even making ends meet day to day, people in the faraway villages that have such a low education, I've had to ask myself, do I really believe that they have potential to lead? And my confident answer is yes, I believe with all of my heart. And so when I encounter them, my desire is to try to bring a positive word and hope to them. But I do believe that they have potential to lead at some level. And so I believe that it's in our nature, it's in our DNA. God created us. And so I believe with all of my heart there's something in everybody uh, that they have the potential to lead at least at one level. And that's an important phrase that we'll get into later, at least at one level. Uh, and it takes faith on our part, and it takes uh, intentionality on our part. It takes faith on their part. But I believe that, that we who are currently leaders uh, can help those that have potential to lead to rise to a new level step by step and enter into something new that God has for them to bring positive influence to their world. But sometimes we have those difficulties. Uh, we have the doubts. And the same as is, uh, is Moses. I'm sure that you know the story of Moses. Uh, Moses was born in Egypt. He was born into the house of the Pharaoh. And you know, uh, he may or may not have had a high education. I'm supposing that he had a high education. I mean, the Egyptians at that time in history were some of the most clever people in the world. Uh, and uh, Moses probably had higher education. He either had a very high education or else he had no education at all because he was the child of a king. He did whatever he wanted to. But I suppose that he had a, a high education. And uh, you know the story when he discovered that uh, he was actually a Hebrew and not an Egyptian. And he went out to try to save the Hebrew people and deliver them by his own hands, by his own strategy, by his own, own, own understanding and, and knowledge, that he failed at that and he ran away and he spent 40 years uh, in the wilderness and he changed from such a high position to the lowest position of taking care of sheep. And then you know the story, went up to Mount Sinai and he met the burning bush, he met God, and God spoke to him and he said, Moses, now it's time. You tried it one time by yourself and it failed, uh, but we're going to do it again uh, and this time you're going to succeed because I'm going to teach you how to do it my way. That's a big mouthful, that is a big lesson right there. We can choose to lead the world's way or we can choose to lead God's way. 
And so Moses, in Exodus chapter 3 and Exodus chapter 4, Moses gave God five excuses on why I can't lead, Lord. The first excuse is found in Exodus chapter 3, verse 11. Uh, but Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? <laughs> Have you ever felt that way? Who am I? Remember, I know who I am. Other people don't know who I am. I know what my weaknesses are. I know what my fears are. I know what my failures are. And you're asking me to lead? You don't know me. I remember going to church for, uh, going to work for a growing church uh, many years ago. And I was the second person on staff, a very uh, influential and powerful leader, a great leader, had a great positive influence on my life. Uh, he was very smart. And uh, the associate pastor who was on staff before me was also very smart. They both are very smart. They, uh, the senior pastor was an author of books and an international speaker. And the associate pastor was just really quick to pick up on things. Had been to Bible school. I had not been to Bible school like him. And so they brought me on staff and started giving me responsibility. I was from a small community. Uh, I didn't do very good in school, and I felt really incompetent, really out of place. And as they kept putting more and more responsibility on me, I would think to myself, these guys don't know who I am. I need to get out of here before they know who I really am, because I am way in over my head. And so sometimes God calls us to lead, uh, and uh, God puts leadership upon us and He moves us into that role. And in my experience in talking to other leaders, most leaders feel incompetent. Even though they look confident on the outside, they have great in, in, in confidence, a lack of confidence uh, on the inside. Moses had a security issue, a personal insecurity issue, like most people. In my experience, most people have a personal insecurity issue where he had failed massively already. He had been rejected. He is now at the backside of the desert shepherding sheep and just letting life go however it's going to go. No plans for greatness uh, in his diary, in his future, in his mind. Uh, and, and so he had to deal with insecurity issues. And when God said, now's the time, I'm sure Moses' mind went back to, hey, I tried this again. I failed, and I don't know what to do. It's been 40 years. I don't have the kind of skills. I'm not the, the young, the strapping young man that I used to be. And so who am I uh, that I should go t to Pharaoh? It's important for us to understand that everybody has value. Whatever your failure has been, whatever your insecurities are, whatever uh, abuse has been put upon you, rejection that has been put upon you, uh, difficulties that you've experienced in your life up to, up to this point, God doesn't look at that. God looks at something in you that often you and I can't see. You see, there's things that, that other people see about us that we don't see about ourselves. And there's certainly things that God sees about us that we don't see about his, ourselves. And you know what? It, it, it's pretty common. I'm just thinking now of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verses uh, 28, I think, through, or maybe 26 through 32, where it says, God has not chosen the wise. God has not chosen those that have the great reputation. God has not chosen the mighty, but God has chosen the weak things of the world, the despised things of the world, to make make something out of them so that He can receive the glory. Isn't that great news for me and you? That, that God has chosen the weak things out of the world and He has poured His grace uh, upon us to give us the, the ability to be able to do what He's called us to do as long as we, we walk in line with Him. And so everybody has value. Everybody has potential. We believe that. We believe that. Uh, about you. And again, can you just take a moment and affirm that to yourself if you're by yourself? And if you're not by yourself, to the person on your right, to the person on your left, every, and say to them, everybody has value, everybody has potential. And that means you. Take a moment and say that if you would. John 3.16, we know it, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God gave His Son 
Jesus gave his life for you, for every person in your church, for every person in your neighborhood, for every person in your village, city, and country, because they have value and they have potential and they are worth reaching out to, bringing to him and developing them. Excuse number two, is found in Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. And Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What's his name? Then what should I tell them? <laughs> he said, Lord, uh, I really don't have a, a personal relationship with you. And that I certainly didn't when I was back in Egypt. I've been here in the wilderness for 40 years. I haven't written the Bible yet. <laughs> and so I don't have all the details that you've given me. I don't know your heart. I know from, from general revelation that you're a, a good God. I can see that because you provide for humanity uh, from general revelation that I see. You know, the, we have water, we have uh, food, we have uh, an earth that can take care of us. But as far as you personally, uh, I don't have a personal relationship. I don't, I don't really know you. And so if, if they start asking me details, what am I going to say? And so uh, Moses did not have uh, a relationship with God, and Moses did not yet know God's character. And so it's very important for us, you know, as, as we choose leaders, uh, as we become a leader and start walking on the path to leadership, and as we begin to choose other leaders, uh, the relationship with Jesus, of course, is essential. What is the level of relationship that they have? Uh, I've written a, uh, a commentary on the, the book of Ephesians, and that can be available to you as, all, uh, as well. It's, it's a resource. It's a massive resource, over 300 pages. It's got lesson upon lesson upon lesson. It's got a sample cell group. It's got a sample sermon in it. Uh, but, but one of the lessons uh, it talks about knowing Christ. Uh, years ago, I did a study on the Greek words for no, and discovered that there are seven different Greek words for our one English word, no. And those seven different Greek words uh, have to do with seven levels of relationship with God. And to, to summarize them, not all seven of them, but the, uh, one of the words is the word ido, I-D-E-O, which we translate in our language video. And so video means that you see somebody from afar, but you don't really have a relationship with them. That's one level of relationship with God. Uh, another one of the important words is uh, gnosko, and gnosko means to have, a, have a, an important relationship with someone else. But then there's another word, and it's, it's a compound word, epigonospo. It means knowledge upon knowledge. And it means to have a clear understanding of that person. And so there are different levels of relationship with God. And as you move into leadership, uh, you remember uh, the, the, the process that, that God brings us through is that He calls us, and then He tests us, and then He breaks us, then He rebuilds us. Those are the, the four steps in the process of uh, developing leaders and the calling of God. He calls us, and then He tests us, and, and tests our heart. Let us know who we are, and what our weaknesses are, what our strengths, and all of that. Uh, the third one is He breaks us. He allows us to go uh, into certain situations as a leader that are just massively beyond our capacity, and maybe even allows us to fail, and meet with things that are so big we can't do it without Him. And that's the whole purpose of the breaking process, where we can say like the Apostle Paul, it's not I, it's Christ. Not by power nor by might, but it's by His Spirit that I can do anything. And so uh, God will, will want us to go through a process so that we can know His, His, His ways, we can know what is pleasing to Him, we can know His principles, and we can know His character. Uh, when I'm teaching new believers and uh, trying to lay a foundation in their lives, I always like to, my very first lesson really uh, is on, on the character of God. Or one of my first lessons is on the character of God, understanding the nature of God. He's a good God. He's a just God. He's a faithful God. He's an all-powerful God. He's an all-knowing God. And so as we begin to move into leadership, uh, and going on the path of leadership, it's very important for us to have uh, a close and ever-growing relationship with God so that we can hear Him, so that we understand the principles that will guide us in making our decisions from the Bible that He reveals to us in the Bible, and also to know His character. And so, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 10 says, So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. 
For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one of us may receive what is due us for the things that's done while in this body, whether good or bad. Paul says, we make it our ambition to please Him. To please Him in every sphere of our life, in our relationship with Him, relationship with family, our relationship with others, relationship with our work, relationship with our finances, our relationship with decisions for the, the future, our entertainment, all these different spheres of, of, of life that, that we function within. Our goal is to please Him. So that we're, whether we're here on this earth or whether they're there with him is that we're seeking to please him. And so in our leadership, we want to know him and we want to know his ways and we want to know his character so that we can please him. First Corinthians chapter three, verses 10 through 15, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only is one escaping through the flames. And so our work as a leader will be tested on the last day. And if we've built according to God's ways, according to God's principles, according to God's heart, well then our, our fruit is going to last and we're going to receive a reward. Uh, but if we've built our ministry, we've built our life, we've built our, our, our leadership uh, on other ways, uh, wood, hay, or stubble, it's going to be burned up. And we're not going to have fruit that remains, uh, although we still will be saved, we'll still be a child of God, reward in heaven in that measure, uh, but a lot of waste. And so we want to make it our goal to know Him and to have a relationship with Him, and to be able to hear His voice, to be able to discern His leading. Very important. Uh, I just listened to a, a podcast uh, about white space. And, and white space means downtime. It means space that we, we specifically carve out each day and throughout the course of our year so that it, it's quiet, so that we're alone, so that we can, we can read, we can plan, we can think we can hear from God. And sometimes we're so busy in our leadership is that the white space disappears. It's just one appointment from another appointment, one activity to another activity. Uh, and, uh, and that eventually can lead to burnout, but uh, it also can lead to not hearing God, of doing things without really praying about it, without really uh, getting the mind of God on something. So it's important for us to build white space uh, into our lives uh, so that we can have time with God on a daily basis, hopefully, time with God and His Word on a daily basis, hopefully, uh, and throughout the year, even setting aside uh, seasons of prayer and seasons of, of quietness in order to be able to think, to plan, to, e to evaluate. So we're talking about uh, Moses' uh, uh, first excuse is, who am I? I've got issues. Why are you choosing me? Moses' second excuse is, who are you? I don't feel like I have a close enough relationship with you to represent you. And so we want to uh, mitigate those issues. We want to deal with those issues. Excuse number three is uh, found in Exodus chapter 4, verse 1. Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? And this is Moses' excuse is, what if they don't listen to me? What if I fail? What if I try? Uh, nobody likes to fail. How many in the class want to fail, like to fail? Nobody likes to. We don't like that feeling. We don't like the, the results of it. Uh, but, uh, uh, but we all have to give it a try. Now, what Moses was evaluating here was his skills. He's saying, I don't have the skills to be able to to go back to Pharaoh and to confront him and to ask that three million people be released to go out into the wilderness to, to celebrate something and eventually to lead them to the promised land. <clears throat> I don't have the skills to do that. 
that I've had uh, maybe a high education in Egypt, uh, but I've been out here in the wilderness for 40 years. I'm a shepherd. And so if Pharaoh wants to know about guiding sheep and where to find grass and water, I can, I can give him that information. But to, to, to go and to, and to persuade him to let us go out and to lead all these people, I don't have the skills. And in fact, he proved <laughs> later on that he did not have the skills to do it. But he obtained the skills by connecting with others, by, by, by creating a team and, and looking to a mentor and getting advice. And so we, we can't allow this skill, this excuse uh, to keep us from moving into leadership. And again, I'm just telling you honestly, I, I'm a farm boy, not a farm boy, but a, a, a village boy, came from a small town. I didn't do good in high school. Uh, never hung out with really anybody influential until I got saved and became a Christian and, and started going on a, a new track. But I have always felt like I was over my head. I moved to Cambodia with my wife and four children. My youngest child was one, a daughter was three, my uh, this next son was 11, my oldest son was 17. I moved to a foreign country. <laughs> I never lived in a foreign country before. There was a war going on. And uh, I had to learn their culture, I had to learn how to eat their food. And, and beyond that, I had to learn how to speak, read, and write their language. This is massively, I was 40 years old when I, I did that. That, you know, who does something like that? Is that it was, I was way above my head. But I moved forward in faith. I attached myself to a mentor and I, I, I disciplined my time and I had a, a burning divi a vision and, and a burning desire that motivated me. Uh, and it's turned out pretty good. And so the, the, the point is, I'm trying to make is that in almost every season of my life, I have lacked the skills to be able to do what I felt like that God wanted me to do. But we can learn the skills. We can develop the skills. There are so many resources with us. There are, are people that can be our, our mentors, our advisors. There's so much information, so many opportunities for us to uh, develop those skills. And so don't let excuse number three be your excuse. Excuse number four, in Exodus chapter four, verse 10, Moses said, I'm not a good communicator. Moses said to the Lord, <clears throat> pardon your servant, Lord. Uh, I've never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I'm slow of speech and tongue. He said, I, I'm not a very good communicator. Maybe he's kind of a quiet personality kind of a guy. He says, I've never stood before people. And again, 40 years, 40 years in the wilderness, Lord. If you would have asked me 40 years ago, you know, when I was in a, the prime of my life, a uh, young man in the palace, confident, you know, I may have been able to do it, but now, you know, I'm, I'm uh, this old, 80 years old, and uh, uh, not, just don't feel confidence that, that uh, I'm not a very good communicator. You know what? The, these are skills that we can learn also. You can learn skills. I'm teaching a class. As I'm teaching this lesson, I'm teaching a class in my leadership institute on how to be an effective communicator. Look, there are some people who have the gift of gab. There are some people who uh, naturally feel confident uh, in front of a camera or in, in front of a group. And, uh, but there's others uh, that can learn the skills. I've had to learn massive skills. Again, I've, I pay attention to people. Uh, I've read many, many books on preaching and teaching and preparing. And, and uh, I've, I've watched a lot. I'm an observer of what people do. And I, I've learned enough skills anyway to be able to communicate in a fairly confident way. And I think in a fairly interesting way. But Moses didn't have confidence to stand in front and talk to people. That was his fourth excuse. And maybe that's your excuse too, that I don't have the skills, Charles. Uh, I don't have the confidence to be able to stand in front. Well, may you may or may not have to stand in front of people in your role in leadership, uh, but you will have to lead a group and you can do it. You can develop those skills to do it. And again, I've got uh, plenty, tons of materials that I will continue to uh, develop. I can make available to you and others on, on these very things, on how to gain confidence to lead a meeting, how to plan a meeting, how to prepare a lesson or a talk and to deliver that lesson or talk and communicate that. The lesson number five, uh, of Moses is found in Exodus chapter 4 verse 13 but Moses said <clears throat> pardon your servant Lord please send someone else uh, and this is Moses again lack of confidence and saying Lord why don't you call someone else to do it Moses compared himself to others and considered that others were better than him 
you know what? I can't go down that road. I've been there. I've compared, you know, my senior pastor that I mentioned to, my first pastor, my second pastor, were great men. They were authors. They were orators. They were great communicators. Uh, and if I compare myself with other, honestly, with doing what I'm doing now, compare myself with other great uh, leadership teachers and leadership mentors, sometimes I think, what are you doing, Charles? Uh, you shouldn't be doing this. Just refer them to someone else. Well, I can refer you, and I will refer you to, to other uh, uh, trainers uh, that can help you a lot uh, in your, your leadership growth, and I should refer you to it. Uh, but you can't compare yourself to others. You've got to receive your calling from God, your mission from God, and you have to pursue it. You have to pursue it with all of your heart. Uh, I, I remember years ago, I read uh, the last words of the Apostle Paul in Second. Timothy, I believe it's chapter 4 is the last chapter there. And when Paul's in prison, he knows he's ready to die. And he said, I, I've fought the faith. I've, I've, I've fought the fight. I've, I've, I've kept the faith. I've finished the course that God has called me to do. You look at the Apostle Paul, you know, we look at him as a great man. We don't know how he looked at himself. He's in prison. He went to prison several times. He went through a lot of uh, terrible situations. He had his, his fellow leaders uh, betray him, persecuted all the time. Maybe he didn't have such a great perspective of himself. We look back in history and say, wow, the Apostle Paul, you know, the, the greatest Christian leaders after Jesus Christ himself. And so uh, we can't compare ourselves with others. We just simply have to get our mission from God. If your mission is a youth leader, if your mission is a children's leader, if your mission is a pastor or a department overseer, you just have to, to take God's mission and you have to focus on it. Learn from others, uh, develop your capacity, read, attend seminars, find a, a mentor, and try to develop your capacity. Uh, but be careful about comparing yourselves to others. Don't let, let that be an excuse to hinder you from moving down the path of leadership. We're now that, again, if you're in a classroom, it's time for us to, to break into groups, groups of no more than two or three. If you're by yourself, take these questions and write them out. Write them out. Don't just sit and think about them momentarily, but write out the answers. Uh, and the first question as I want is you break into groups, two or three in each group, uh, or you're by yourself, you're going to write this out. What excuses do you make or have you made not to lead? What's your excuse? Come on, let's, it's time for you to be honest and, and share. You have insecurity issues, you lack skills, uh, do you feel like that you're comparing yourself with others and you're so small? And so share that, we'll take a few minutes uh, and share that uh, with those uh, in the group. And uh, number, question number two, what is your biggest fear about leading? Is it fear of failure? Is it fear of rejection? Uh, is it uh, not having a clear vision? And so we share that in your group as well. And question number three, what skills must you develop to lead? You see, doing something, this exercise right now is key because you're identifying what your weaknesses are and you're creating a plan of action. By answering these three questions, this is why I want you to write it down, you're creating a plan of action. Um, okay, well, these are my biggest fears. What can I do about those fears? These are the skills that I need to develop. Okay, set yourself on a course to develop those skills. And these are the excuses that I've made or are still making. Okay, so how can you mentally and emotionally attack those excuses that you've personally made, reject them, and overcome them? All right, and so again, thank you for, for tuning in. We'll let you spend the rest of the time uh, in your, your class or by yourself uh, thinking through these questions and thinking through this lesson. I hope it's helped you.